Hi folks and welcome back to the Advantage Applications channel. In this video I want to talk about an error that you may encounter when you're doing development work in Microsoft Access and that's runtime error 2118 that says you must save the current field before you run the requery action. Now you're most likely to encounter this error if you're working with a combo box whose row source is populated from a table or a query and you attempt to modify that row source in code while the combo box has focus and then to requery that combo box. So I'm going to show you the the trouble, I'm going to show you the error, I'm going to show you the bare minimum you need to fix it, and then I'm going to show you how you can dress that fix up a little bit to make it a little more user friendly. So let's go ahead and jump in. To demonstrate this error, I've created a very simple form with only three fields to track home repairs. I have a date field, and I have a combo box, which is what we'll use to generate that error, and this combo box's row source is populated by the values in table location. This combo box is bound to the location ID field and displays the value in location field. If I select an item like kitchen from the list, there's no trouble at all. And I'll enter here fixed leaky faucet. But let's say the intention of this application is to allow users to add items to this combo box if they don't already exist. And in order to do that, of course, it would need to update the values in table location first, then requery that combo box so that that new value shows up. So let's see what happens if I try that right now. And now, instead of picking an item from this list, I'm going to enter garage manually and tab out of the control. I have a stop in the code here so we can kind of step through it and see what's going on. The first thing I do is to prompt the user and say, this item is not on the list. Would you like to add it? I'm going to click yes. Then I build a simple SQL statement that's going to insert that value that's in CBO locations text value into the table TBL location. Now, if you're unfamiliar with executing SQL statements from VBA, check out my video here and it'll help you get a better understanding of it. Okay, I run the SQL statement. It lets me know I'm about to append a row, but now when I try to requery that combo box, I get the error 2118, you must save the current field before you run the requery action. Okay, let's go ahead and end that. Now I'm going to hit the escape key to nullify that entry. Now if I look in table location, I see that garage was indeed added. It's just the requery of the combo box that's given us trouble. And it's actually a pretty easy fix. Let's take a look at that. The problem is, there's still a value in the combo box when we try to requery it that doesn't technically belong there. And that's what's causing it to bulk. So what we need to do is create a new variable named new value in this case. You can name it whatever you like. And before we execute any SQL or anything, we're going to assign to new value the value that's stored in the default variable up here when you create this event routine called new data. Then we're going to set our combo box to zero. Now, since our combo box's row source is tied to this table, bound to the identity column and displaying the location column, setting it to zero is the same thing as saying it's set to nothing, no record here. That's going to allow us to requery that. So the next thing we need to do is to update our SQL statement so that it isn't trying to insert the value of the text property but rather the value stored in our variable new value. Oh, and one other thing we want to do for good measure is I want to go ahead and set this other default parameter variable up here, response, to zero as well. Okay, I'm going to take out the stop. And instead of entering garage, since we already have that in the table now, I'm going to try something different. We'll say pool house. So we see garage was added, but pool house doesn't exist on there, so I'm going to add it now tab out of the control. I'm asked if I would like to add it. I say yes. I get the append one row message. And you can see right here it was added. It's requeried. Everything's sorted alphabetically. And I can of course select it now and move on. Okay, so let's look at the code one more time. So all we did was say Whatever value is stored in the combo box right now, we're going to transfer that to a new variable we created called new value. Then we set the combo box so that it's equal to zero, and we turn the responses off. 
This keeps it from complaining that the item doesn't exist in the combo box. Now we adjust our SQL statement so that it inserts the value in our new variable, new value. We execute the query to put that value into table location. Then we can requery our combo box. That's the bare minimum that you need to get around that error. But now let's dress it up and make it look a little better and a little more user friendly. It would be ideal if after the user entered that value in the combo box that didn't already exist there, if it updated the table as it does now, but then also reselected the value the user entered. To do this, we're going to get the ID of the newly inserted value and then set the combo box equal to that ID and that should select it for the user. So how do we get the ID of the record we just inserted? Well, there's a few ways to approach that, but since I like to use access linked to SharePoint, I'm going to show you the way that I typically do it for a linked SharePoint list. Because I'm going to be making more videos in the future showing you why I believe that's a really good way to use access in the modern business environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is close this form since it's linked to the table. And we need to edit that table. I'm going to open it in design view and I'm going to add a new field here and I'm just going to call it earmark. I'm going to set it to text and then save it. Now in the code, I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call it earmark value and also make that a string. And right up top of all the other statements here, I'm going to capture a unique earmark value. And this is really useful if you have a multiple user environment. And what I'm going to make that earmark value equal to is the current date and time plus a tilde character and the username of whoever's logged into the workstation or computer that's calling this code. And just to show you what that'll look like, I can copy all of this and play it out in the immediate window down here. And so this is what our earmark value would look like. Now in our insert statement, not only will we be adding a value to the location field, but we will also be adding a value to the earmark field. So I'll add it here as well. Which means that I will also need to expand this SQL statement a little bit. And what this is going to let us do then is after our combo box is requeried, we can set the combo box's value equal to a DLOOKUP that will return the ID value of the newly inserted record. So now if we rerun this and add yet another location to our rooms, I don't know, we'll call this vault. <laughs> We're asked if we would like to add it. We say yes, depends one row, vault is selected for us and we can move on. So it's less clicks for the user. And of course, if we wanted to be really slick, we would turn off that little message that we're getting about appending one row. So I would turn those warnings off. Execute that code and then turn them right back on. So that's it. With just a few lines of code, we can actually come up with a pretty slick solution to get around that error and to help our users get the most out of our tool without too much clutter or too much clicking. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do find these videos useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Take care.